organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on this live edition of Daily Iowan TV, new food alert, barbecue hits the old Capitol Mall, and baton twirling, a new studio in Iowa City launches. Iowa golf has a new rising star. And the Iowa volleyball team is on a roll. All that and more coming up. Stay with us on Daily Iowa TV. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Bradley Martin. Looks like the old Capitol Mall has some new flavor this week. The newest restaurant, Jimmy Jack's Rib Shack, is shaking things up in the local food economy, bringing you old fashioned flavors and hearty portion sizes. Uh, Jimmy's owners, Jimmy Adrian and Jack Piper, who also own Atlas and Basta, are expressing their excitement to bring barbecue to the downtown area. Jimmy Jack's was named the best barbecue in 2015 and is open seven days a week. A new Baton Studio has recently opened in Iowa City. This is the Baton Studio in, this is the only Baton Studio in a 130 mile radius of Iowa City. Reporter Mackenzie Cooper has that story. Jessica Baker had a dream of teaching baton and dance since she was really young. Now she's the owner of the only baton studio in a 130 mile radius. Ambition Baton and Dance recently opened up in Iowa City. She hopes that her studio will make baton twirling more popular. I think that allowing twirlers to be in high school marching bands or the Golden Girl at the University of Iowa really brings in baton twirling when people don't know about it. So getting ourselves out there and marketing the sport of baton twirling is really important. Ambition Baton Twirling was founded in 2008 by Jessica Baker. It offers recreational classes, private lessons, and has two competition teams that can be at Miss Majorette of Iowa in May. Next year, dance classes will also be offered at the studio. When finding a studio location, she said that finding a building with tall enough ceilings was a necessity for baton twirling. Jessica Baker hopes that by performing in the Iowa City area, her studio will be able to broaden baton twirling and get people more interested. Reporting from Ambition Baton and Dance, this is Mackenzie Cooper, Daily Iowa TV. With midterms taking off, many students on campus are feeling the stress of exams and projects. Reporter Molly Shen brings you that story. It is not easy for UI students to spend their time this week because of the midterm. The main library becomes the most popular spot for group study. Students are so stressful for the amount of midterm. Min Chang Zhu was one of them, who are overwhelming at his midterms. I have like one midterm this week, but two next week. Um, actually, like I have like tons of homework. I I normally sleep at three o'clock because I have to do a lot. I have to just spend a lot of time on my homework. Min Chang Zhu also complained about he have too many terminologies need to memorize for a midterm, and as a health promotion major. He need to find some warrior image to help her to memorize by Google. Kelsey Stanley, the assistant director of the UI Counselor Service, gave some suggestions to the UI student. I think it's important to learn different ways to manage stress. And so, uh, I, you know, to me, one of the most important things is aerobic exercise. We need to dissipate uh, some of the adrenaline that's running in our bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need some exercise to keep us healthy and keep our minds working well, to keep the blood flowing to our minds. Min Chang Zhu also feel the same weights. I play basketball with my friends, I go to the gym and just go work out. And I think that's very stressful. <laughs> A lot of US students are really stressful right now because they have like tons of midterm. They have a lot of papers and exams to do at the same time. However, they can handle it like by exercises, but we can still see so many live image in the main library. Malaysian with will TV. Members of the nonprofit organization Community Health Initiative Haiti are planning to return to Haiti to assist 
in the damages done by Hurricane Matthew. Friday, October 14th, the Iowa City-based group will be flying out to provide free health care services and extra supplies to the community. Community Health Initiative members travel to Haiti five times a year to offer the same services. The University of Iowa Biology Department has a hydroponic roof and greenhouse above Bio Building East. Though the greenhouse door, th excuse me, through the greenhouse door, you will see both indigenous and tropical flora. The garden has been open for approximately one year thanks to the efforts of a grant by, excuse me, of Grant Gregory and a team of students performing a pilot uh, project of sustainability through the Tippy College of Business. And it was pretty chilly walking out of my apartment this morning. Zhao Li is here to tell us more if that cold temperature is around to stay. Zhao? Thanks, Bradley. As you said, the cold temperature will stick around for the remaining of the day. In fact, today we can expect a low of 34 degrees. And you may want to keep your umbrella on hand as there are chances of thunderstorms. Starting from this morning to the mid-afternoon, the temperature will be 59 degrees with rain showers. Moving into the night, the temps will drop slightly into 34 degrees with cloudy skies. And Thursday morning, we can, we can expect a 58 degrees with clear skies. Now taking a look at our 6 days extended forecast. Tomorrow, we'll have similar temperatures with a low of 38 degrees. Friday, the, temp the temperature will rise up to 68 degrees with also clear skies. Saturday, there's an 80% chance of rain with temps stay in the high 70s. Sunday and next Monday, temperature will also stay in the 70s with cloudy skies. That's all I have for you here at the Weather Studio. Now, Bradley, back to you. Thanks, Xiao. Looking forward to that. The Iowa City School Board held a meeting last night to discuss possible changes to school facilities. Some proposals included a delay in building a new Coralville Elementary School and increasing the capacity for preschool students. Superintendent Stephen Murley says the proposed changes would cost around $40 million. These changes would also affect a portion of the 10-year facility plan running until the year 2021. Kinnick Stadium might get more renovations, $90 million worth. At the next Iowa Board of Regent meeting, the decision will be made whether or not the athletic department will fund amenities such as a premium box seating area and new restrooms. The meeting will take place October 19th in Cedar Falls. Stick with Daily Iowan TV for further updates on that story. I certainly think it would be exciting to get a little bit of a fresh coat of paint on Kinnick Stadium. Zach and Olivia have more on that and all of your Hawkeye sports. I'll throw it over to them. That's right, Brad. I saw some of those drawings. It's going to be pretty impressive. It's true, Zach. I didn't know Hawkeye football could be any better, but the renovations I think will do it. There you go. Iowa football is now 4-2 and two on their season, and Katie Sextra has more on what might help them get back on track next Saturday. Last weekend, we saw a glimpse of the Iowa football team that we saw all season last year. And that might be because they're finally starting to have a little fun out on the field. That's what we really tried to focus on in practice this last week, just having energy and getting back to, you know, really the reason why you play the game. It's, it's to have fun, um, enjoy yourself out there with your teammates. And we were able to do that and it carried over into the game. And I think that helped us a lot. You know, we're just out there having fun. You know, we put that emphasis on it too, this week, just go out there having fun, just being live and having a lot of energy biggest thing was just as a team we had a lot more energy and guys are having a lot more fun out there. I think some guys let loose um, you know stop they stopped worrying about you know trying to mess up um, they just started uh, you know worrying about doing their job um, and being on their toes instead of being on their heels so I think you know we're all coming along here um, and just trying to get better every week. It starts in practice uh, with the preparation uh, you got to have fun when you practice and as you practice it carries on into the game so I mean like I said we had a a great week of practice last week and you know we're just going to try to keep that rolling this week and get ready for Saturday. We've done a good job so far this week um, just flying around uh, enjoying each other out there um, you know because we're really blessed to be able to play this game there will be a lot of people out there that would love to be in our shoes so uh, just take advantage of that and uh, just have fun with it. Now hopefully this fun mentality can carry over into their game against Purdue this coming weekend. Reporting outside the practice facility, this is Katie Sextro for Daily Iowan TV Sports. Well, another Hawkeye athlete that always seems to be having fun out there on the court is Peter Jock. Jock's about to start his senior season and will do so with a new title. The West Des Moines native was just announced a member of the Big Ten preseason All-Big Ten team. He's one of just 10 men's basketball players selected to the 2016 preseason All-Big Ten team 
as selected by the media voting panel. Jack was the second team all-conference honoree a season ago. The Iowa Volleyball team is definitely feeling good about themselves after extending their win streak in the Big Ten to four games this past weekend. But there are no days off in the grueling Big Ten. Colin Murphy has more. The Iowa Volleyball team's confidence is sky high after taking a weekend series against Purdue and Indiana. They are on a four game win streak in the Big Ten and are playing extremely well. But that does not mean their preparation for their upcoming weekend series will take a hit. We never prepare differently. It really doesn't matter, you know, how many we won or lost or whatever. It's the, a lot of the same training, preparation, drill work. Um, the only thing that changes is who we prepare for. And so different teams will call for different types of training or different styles of focus. But um, back to business as usual for us. Really excited. Obviously, we played Maryland before, but we know it takes a lot to beat a team twice in the Big Ten. So we know that we're going to have to prepare for that. And Obviously, we want to get Ohio State, too, and we know that's a team we can get. So we're really excited and just ready to do some work this weekend. We just beat number 17 Purdue, which has definitely helped our confidence. But I think it also, we need to maintain and keep like working hard every single day. We can't become overconfident, but it definitely makes us feel better going into every single match. Coach Shemansky believes it will be a very special weekend for Big Ten Volleyball as they take on Maryland right before the Maryland basketball team hosts their Midnight Madness, and then they travel to nationally ranked Ohio State. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, this has been Colin Murphy, Daily Iowan, TV Sports. Well, Zach, what an incredible weekend for the Hawks, definitely. Man, it really was. Coach Bon Shemansky has them going to the right way right now. I agree. University of Iowa field hockey senior Natalie Cafone has been named Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. The Big Ten Conference announced yesterday it marks the fourth Big Ten honoree of Cafone's career, and it also marks the fourth weekly award for the Hawkeyes this season. Cafone scored four goals and registered one assist last weekend, helping the Hawkeyes to a pair of shutout wins over Central Michigan and UC Davis. Cafone was dominant in both games, registering five points against Central Michigan and scoring two goals against UC Davis. Field hockey reporter John Leo will have more on Cafone and her Iowa career on Thursday's show. Now, golf is all about that next swing, the next chip, and the next putt. Jessica Ip has been itching at the chance to lead her team and I took a closer look at the junior's career. Jessica Imp has continued to make strides thus far for the University of Iowa golf program. Imp in her third season, repping the black and gold and the Ontario Canada native has a lot to look forward to. Coach Megan Menzel saw this potential in Imp from day one. She was a player that had a ton of potential. So um, she was a little bit of a late, you know, late bloomer, but has tons of length off the tee, you know, just a very natural ball striker. And so um, it's very exciting. We knew that we were getting someone that, you know, the sky is kind of the limit for her. We, you know, definitely expect her to be at the top of our lineup. And um, she's proven several times that she can compete with the best players in the country. So we know that we have a very strong player in her and look for good things every single week out. All that hard work paid dividends for Ip as she earned herself a spot of the Big Ten preseason honor list. She also led her team in the Red Raider Inventational earlier this spring. Right off the fall, that first tournament, I definitely didn't have any expectations and I think that was a really good, I think that was probably a key to success. You know, I think she just continues to evolve as a player and I think um, she had a, a good summer, you know, challenged herself competitively and she's been kind of preparing for this year and I think, you know, just continues to get better and better. Imp doesn't pay attention to the others out there on the course that she'd rather worry about her own game. Not thinking about how or where I want to end up because I have no idea how other people are going to play but just knowing that if I just play my best it could be pretty good and then just knowing that all the practice I've put in is good enough. Zach Mackey for Daily Iowa TV Sports. The women's golf team is off to the Greenville Regional Preview in North Carolina next week. That's all from us. Bradley back to you. Well, folks, that's all we have for you on this morning edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out on dailyiowan.com for all the latest news between now and our next newscast. For Daily Iowan TV, I'm Bradley Martin, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Have a great day, Iowa City.